Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome to Fantasy Forecast for Saturday, October 29th, 2016. Uh, this is episode four. Um, we're going to do a quick review of last night's results. Um, you can view yesterday's video if you want. Um, just a quick reminder, guys. If I haven't posted a video yet and you're looking for a line, follow me on Twitter at MikeMiller78. I posted the line that I, this line right here on Twitter yesterday hours before the lineups locked. So if any of you guys were looking for the video I saw in the comments, you know, you missed it, follow me on Twitter. I will tweet these lineups to you guys. There won't be an explanation, but you guys will at least see what I'm running. Okay, um, the quick review from yesterday. We got Westbrook and Frazier, 80 and 40. You got Hood and Williams at the shot guard positions. They were just okay. I mean, Matthews didn't put up the shots he needed. Um, if Dallas had won the game, he probably would have, just the way, the way the cookie crumbles. Winslow did just fine on that 40-whatever-100 price. I'll take a four times value to fit in the Westbrook and the Davis on the cash game. Robertson really paid off well. 33 points on a 3,900 salary or something like that, I believe. What was it? 3,900, only 1.7% owned. So he was definitely a sleeper that probably would have won, you know, if you had a couple other key players. Like I said in the video, I was trying to get a cash lineup for you guys. I wasn't trying to hit tournament. Davis, power forward, another 77 fantasy points. I didn't think he was going to do 95, but look at that. Sure as shit, guys. He put, railed up 70, and you can't win if you got Westbrook putting up 80 and Davis putting up 70, and you don't have those guys. That's half a 300 score. Draymond did not do as well, even though it was a pretty fast-paced game. I expected him to have 40 fantasy. He only put up 33. And then you have Hibbert at 1.2. And the reason why he did so shitty, he got injured right at the beginning of the game, guys. So that's just what it is. And injuries do happen. But I'll take a 330. There's no question 331 just about everywhere last night. So enjoy, guys. I hope you're enjoying the two in a row. Always remember to bet light, though, especially this first week. I don't want to be responsible for anyone losing a ton of money when we don't have enough data, really, to really focus in on what needs to be done here, okay? So let's move off from there. And let's head back over to today's upcoming schedule. Oh, there it is. Okay. So for today, and I'll go through the positions like I usually do. At the point guard position, we have Lillard, 9,100 against Denver. I think there's better ways to spend the money. Um, I'm looking for five times value or more, guys. Yeah, look at his average over the two games. He's put up 48 points. So he could probably do the same again. The thing is, can you afford him? Because if you buy him, even though, and I know he's not a $10,000 price player or anything, but if you can buy him, you're going to find yourself cutting into the other positions elsewhere, specifically probably LeBron James at small forward, or maybe Leonard or Aldridge, because that's where I spent up on this lineup. And I'll explain why in a few minutes, guys. But you have a choice. You could take Lillard. He'll probably give you your five times value. I just felt that Frazier will probably pay out close to six times today. So, I mean, the guy's been putting up an incredible run of minutes right now, and he's just the second choice option behind Davis. Davis is putting all of, whenever Davis gets an assist, it's basically going to Frazier. So, run it to the bank all day long until he goes up to 6,000 or until New Orleans changes their way they're playing a bit. Same with Ty Lawson. I mean, he's getting most of the point guard minutes in Sacramento, and he's doing a fine job, and as long as Darian Collison is out for sack, Ty Lawson is in. And I'll take him at 5,200. A steal, to be quite honest, guys. Um, Kyrie Irving is another choice today. He could put up decent numbers. I've been looking at his uh, against Orlando, Cleveland. I'm worried again about blowout factor, though. I think Cleveland could pull up head by 20 towards the end, which is literally bad. But um, I would be avoiding Rondo today. I would be avoiding Walker today. I mean, we've already taken advantage of the J. Rue holiday absence, you know, with Frazier. Same thing with the Collison absence. You can go with Alfred Payton today, too, against Cleveland, because I figure he'll be playing whether it's a blowout or not through all four. So Payton's an interesting pick today as well. You can look at him. Um, and that's it for the point guard position, really. I don't see much else. I mean, going to the scrubs. Patty Mills could, you know, put up some points against New Orleans. I, I can definitely see that happening. So if you want to go cheap, I would be looking at Patty Mills. Mm. That's about it for today. Let's move on to shot guard. A little thin on the shot guard position today, guys. You got the Greek freak at the top there, and he'll probably do just fine against the Nets, uh, especially with Brook Lopez out. I mean, 
if you can fit him and you don't like James or you don't like Leonard or something, fit him. Go for it. Um, other than that, I'd be passing away today. Um, taking McCollum today, I think he's going to bounce back after these two games that have been around like 30 fantasy points. I think he's in a nice shot to pit up 35 today. And that's a net of above five times value. It's what I'm looking for in a cash game. Uh, Batum could do okay, but I'm not sold on that choice. Bradley looks smart at 5,800. Mm. Sure, they're playing on Charlotte home court, though. It'll probably keep them in it. And Bradley's not a bad choice today. If you guys want Bradley instead, you know, like... And I went with a line there. Um, I'll explain in a second. Without Collis and everything else, um, I think that this team is just a little shot defensively. And so I expect Minnesota will come out there and play well and just put up shots. I don't think I don't expect a lot of defense in the game. So I like Levine today. Um, and he was at 56. Yeah. And then we got Will Barton down there. Um, will the thrill? Nah. 29 points in his first game and against a Portland game that's supposed to be close and has a high over-under. You can take it, but he's dependent on the shots falling. He really is. So I like him as a tournament play today, not a cash play. McCollum Levine, um, and that's my cash picks for shot guard. Let's see what else we got on the board. There's nothing else really intriguing, guys, to be honest. I mean, somebody could ball out at the minimum price, but I don't expect it. Let's move on to small forward. Here, I advocate spending up, guys. I would take LeBron. I think he's in a smart position against Orlando. I think that, really, they don't have anyone that can stop him. So, I mean, even if he only plays three quarters, he's in line to put up a 55, 60-point game today, fantasy-wise. And that's the kind of return you want on your high dollars. You want six times more for your studs and your scrubs to pay five times. Hmm. We got Butler. We... Anthony's an interesting choice today, but, I mean, against a, a bad Memphis team, let's be honest. They still haven't improved much defensively from last year to this year. Um, I would think that he's in a position to do a bit better today, but I've already spent up at small forward because I took Leonard as well. And Leonard is a great choice against a horrible New Orleans team. I don't see much of a Davis defending Leonard today. I really don't. They're, they're just not in compatible slots, so... I figure Leonard's going to have substandard defense today, and basically he's just going to run the court with them. Davis will be on the other end trying to keep a minute, but San Antonio plays teams tight, in case you guys haven't noticed. Look at what they did to Golden State. I mean, they only they held them to 100 points in the first game of the season. It was like a 130 to 100 blowout. People were like, what the hell? Yeah, San Antonio is a, still a good team. Forget, Pops is one of the best coaches in the league. All right. So I got Kwame, and I'm taking him, and I expect him to pull that fantasy average today against a bad New Orleans team, if not higher, maybe 55 points, which is why I've got the small forward position being spent up. If I'm thinking James can pull 55 and Leonard can pull 55, that's 110 points in my fantasy score already. Okay. Um, we got Rudy Gay, probably put up a few more shots with Collison out, averaging 34. Not bad, but now under five times value from where he started out with. Um, you can check out Wiggins, put up 33. Sacramento is going to be somewhat bad defensively today. Wiggins is the choice if you need to spend down a bit. Mm, not so sure about Jake Crowder today or Aaron Gordon. They could perform, but I'm not entirely positive. And that's really about it there. Okay, so moving off small forward, let's get into power forward for today. Power forward position, you're only one, there's only one guy that can kill. It's Anthony Davis here at the top. I mean, look at his average fantasy points, 86.3. Now, the thing is, if a guy puts up 95 points in the first two games, and I had him yesterday thinking that he could repeat the performance, you know, somewhat. See, the thing is, I think he's going to decline another 50 points today. So I think you're going to be paying, like, you know, yeah, I took him yesterday. But he had 77 fantasy points, and what if he only puts up 57 today against San Anne? That's a lot to pay for 57 fantasy points. 10-8? Especially when Aldridge can ball like no other against New Orleans. Like I was just saying, like there isn't much defense. Um, Davis will probably have to work a bit on Leonard and Aldridge, but I don't think he's going to see either one of them on defense, guys. So it looks like San Antonio is just going to blow their asses out today. And it could be wrong, but that's all the caveats, but we'll see. Okay, power forward. We got Kevin Love. Yeah. 
The Love's got 41 points on average in the last two games against an Orlando team that's been hurting. Take them all day long, guys. You're looking at close to six times value again. Now, if you think Davis can put up 65 points, fantasy-wise, find a way to fit him in. It's a better deal than Love, you know? Just multiply by six and who's going to land there. But other than that, Porzingis ain't going to pull 40 points today. Parker's not going to pull 30. Well, Parker could, could ball it at 36 with Brook Lopez out, but I don't think so. Uh, Jokic won't do it. Randolph definitely won't do it. Um, and then you're starting to get into more mid-tier and scrub players. You know, it's not a stud anymore. So um, Ibaka's been moving up in the dollars. I still like him a bit. Georgie Diang looks okay today, too, at 5,700. I don't mind him. Hmm. Let's see if there's anyone cheap in here. I don't really see any cheap players so far. All right, and move on to center. Center, Cousins is your top choice on the board, but I think he's too expensive for that average fantasy point he's put up in just the two games. So if you think he's going to run 60 points today, take him. If not, avoid him like the plague. <laughs> Towns. Towns can put up 50 against Sack. If you have the money at center, definitely consider Towns today. I, I, I won't hesitate to say that. Um, he's going to do better than his 35-point average, I believe. Vucevic, I don't think so against Cleveland. Lopez is out. Gasol has... N n n that's the other Gasol, anyways. And look how much Powell has dropped, guys. Pal started out the season at the top tiers, and I was telling everyone avoid that price. Now he's 6,800. Everyone's realizing, though, Pops isn't playing him the same way that everyone was expecting. I mean, the defense is actually coming from Deadman. They're sticking in the big man Deadman instead of Pasol Gasol sometimes. I'm going to take advantage of that. He started at 39, he's at 41. He hasn't moved up enough. That's my pick for today, but let's move on to the rest of the choices. You can look at Miles Turner today. Anyone that puts up 46 points in the fantasy center position, yeah, one was 60 and one was 30, but it, he's probably going to average around that 40 area. I mean, he might drop a little bit from here, but 40 points for 6,900, I'll take it. Um, Horford has gone up a Well, actually, he's down 100 from that 7,000 start, and he's only put up 30 fantasy points, and that's only around a four times value. I guess against Charlotte, without much of a change, I'd avoid. Avoid Gasol again, like I was saying yesterday, guys. Um, I mean, if you have to spend down, spend down. But, I mean, look, you got Nursic there for Denver putting up 39 fantasy points. I have no clue how in the fuck he did it, but, I mean, if you're going to scrub yourself down, scrub down. If you need to scrub down even further, scrub to Deadman. If you can get 22 fantasy points, more than five times value, out of $4,000 in salary, you're sitting pretty on a cash game. I'd avoid Hibbert today, guys, after the injury from yesterday. And I would be avoiding Tristan Thompson as well, just for the whole season now at this point, because the Cleveland changes mean he's not getting to see the ball as much. Okay, that's it for Saturday. I'll go ahead and review my optimal cash lineup for today again. At the point guard position, take Frazier and Lawson. At the shot guard position, McCollum and Levine. At the small forward position, James and Leonard. At the power forward position, Aldridge and Love. And the center today is Deadman. And again, this is a cash game lineup, so you want to play it in one, two, five dollar, fifty fifties, and double ups. Single entries only, guys. If they allow multiple entries, avoid it. The same advice I always give. Don't go against the pros when they can put in a hundred different lineups against you. Go against a pro if they can only put their best against you, because at least that's a fair game. All right, gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed Fantasy Forecast for today. I hope you guys have definitely won money with the last two lineups. If you missed yesterday's, again, follow me on Twitter at MikeMiller78. And if you enjoyed the show, if you enjoyed the lineup, you know, leave some comments in the sections below or drop a big, nice big old thumbs up for me. I love seeing that. All right, guys, going out there, go win some big money. Enjoy your day.